walls, pieces, fragments of life that I can then put into my Sure. My name is Steve Moores. Uh, I've been some kind of an artist most of my life. From an, an unlikely beginnings in an industrial town in the northwest of England, where most people were working uh, in labor type jobs, I realized that I had this deep interest in the arts and I basically had to pursue this myself by going to the library, by uh, painting a home in my bedroom from the age of 12, 13, 14. This developed into a photography course, a specific documentary photography course, which was run by a guy called David Hearn, who was a member of Magnum Photo Agency. It's, uh, it's one of the biggest and first photo agencies of its kind dealing with specifically documentary photography. It was an eye-opening experience. I mean, really extraordinary. A lot of his associates and friends uh, were people like uh, Josef Kadelka, Martin Parr, uh, and the likes of they would actually come, he would invite them to come and give crit critiques of the students' work. But my interest developed outside of photography whilst I was there in the sense that I wanted more control. Um, I wanted to be able to manipulate reality to suit my needs and I was very impatient with the what you click uh, is what you get. Uh, this was frustrating for me. So I actually began to photomontage whilst I was in this very puritanical kind of documentary photography course and I was convinced I was going to get thrown out because I was cutting up my pictures and making, rearranging things. And this is almost like a crime in, in documentary photography. I was in an effort to try and manipulate what I couldn't manipulate in reality into something that I was trying to say. So I felt it very, I felt validated in this. I was looking for a, uh, a closer truth to how I felt about things, not just accepting what the camera would take. My friends also were telling me, you know, David Hearn's gonna call you into his office and say, I don't agree with this, so you, you must leave my, uh, my church of documentary photography. So in, in a preemptive, uh, anarchic kind of move, I, I went one day to his office and I knocked on his door and I went in and he, and he said, yes, can I help you, Steve? And I said, yeah, I know you're going to throw me off the course because I'm cutting up photos and I'm photo montaging. And, and I went on and on and on justifying why I was doing this. And, uh, and he patiently, you know, in his wisdom, is just listening and nodding. Uh, and I finish, uh, and he says, well, okay. He says, actually, I love what you do. I, I went, oh, excuse me? He said, yeah, it's, I've never seen anything like it. No one coming through these doors has, has thought to do this kind of thing. And I see where you're going with it, I think. And it's interesting. It's new. Um, you have my blessing. And he even then came with me to... Uh, exchange my camera in a camera shop for something that was more appropriate for shooting bits of pieces that I wanted to use in photo montage rather than to be the you know fly on the wall kind of camera guy and and he even gave me his old uh, light meter because there was a day when the light meter was not inside the camera so he gave me his old light meter and he said you know back in the 60s and 70s I used this light meter on the Beatles on Sophie Loren, Kirk Douglas, and he listed all these famous people that he'd, not that it made any difference to the light meter, but he was in a leather pouch and, and he gave it to me and I was so honored and so enthused by his support. And I realized also where he was coming from. For him, it wasn't a limit. For him, it was exactly what I sought in, in photo montage, which was simply the expression, uh, the communication, the, the, the bringing together, the, the sharing of information and sharing of lives and, you know, it's almost like the first kind of internet where you are connecting the world uh, in, in things that you would otherwise have to have gone to, physically have to have been there, which of course was not always available to most people on the planet. Photography was an explosion of knowledge and information and awareness. Now for me, I think I just have more selfish needs than the purely optical reproduction uh, that cameras give. And I have thoughts of how I could move it further. So the photo montage was a very natural thing for me to do. 
So one of the very first uh, photo montages was done in uh, the late 19th century. And this guy, he actually composited images that he took separately of individuals in various poses and then montaged them together in this panoramic scene. And it's done quite flawlessly. He simply did what he needed to do. And I, I consider what I do simply what I need to do. Well, I used to see them as separate uh, things, photography and painting. I knew I needed to take it one into the world of the other. And the very first time this started to happen, apart from photo montage, um, was actually when I was living and working in London, uh, shooting portraits for magazines. Now, I was doing this portrait of a guy called Steve Barron. There, there, there was a very adventurous uh, uh, video maker, music video maker. And I started to, with a magnifying glass, to scratch on the film to give white lines and to... Uh, and I would use um, felt tip pens, markers, to color areas in different colors. And I would be drawing on the original slide. It was actually for an article inside the magazine about him. And they liked the portrait that I took so much that they took that portrait and made it about me on the cover of the magazine, <laughs> which was wonderful validation for something that I was thinking, should I be doing this, scratching on negatives and stuff? And these things were published. You know, I, I found art directors that were excited by it. After a few years, I actually gave up photography very abruptly because I didn't want to be one thing. I, I had multiple interests. I was in my mid-twenties. And I thought this is, uh, I, I don't want to be signing to one path. Uh, I got a job teaching photography part-time, touring Europe in a, in a rock band, exhibiting paintings, photography. I started uh, writing poetry and suddenly it, it got very broad. And if you're in London, there are many places to fulfill all these interests. You know, the same as New York, where I live now. Moving forward maybe 30 years to uh, a year ago, I'd been working as a photographer and an illustrator for magazines for many years. And I decided that I, it's about time I went full-time for my own artistic pursuits and expression. There was a day when I wanted to look like Francis Bacon, you know, 10 years ago. There was a day when I wanted to look at this. Everybody goes through this when they're searching. I knew this must be something that only I could produce. It's like, you know, giving birth. You don't know what your child's going to look like. Uh, but you want to have a child. So I, I went through the, the procreation process and, uh, and out came this th thing. And that I really begin to deal with combining what I'm seeing as these two possibilities. Photographic, optical authority, in a sense. And the more ambiguous, capricious, expressive aspects of paint, illustration, whichever you want to call it making your own marks, making your own colors, making your own decisions. What I hope I'm doing now, add more of myself than photography ever could contain. Now, I'm hoping that this will contribute, as other artists are doing, to not only the shared sense of awareness of how things are and how things look on the planet, but how people experience their life. So this, I feel, almost like... Um, a duty, in a sense, that I should do this. Uh, a guy called Patanjali, he wrote, I think it's 198 sutras. They're simply sort of words of wisdom about specific issues. I consider my work, each one, to be almost like a sutra. I'm hoping that there is some universality to it that anybody can pick up on, because it's about what it is to live. And I'm just saying it through my eyes and trying to draw attention to it and then share it. And I'm hoping that that will make for a better world.